Hi everyone and welcome back to the Aquascape Corner. Today I'm just going to do a short video on my African dwarf frogs, how to breed them and what successes I've had. As always, if you've got any questions, just drop them down in the comments. So African dwarf frogs are a small species of fully aquatic frog from the sort of tropical rainforest belt of Africa, so the Congo, that sort of area. Uh, they're really good pets. They don't need a land area, as you can see in this tank, they're fully aquatic. You can keep them with fish, but nothing too big, nothing too aggressive. Grammys, tetras, that sort of stuff. So yeah, in this tank I have three. Got a male there, female, that's Frida, so I've just fed them. That's Frida, Eagle Piggle, and somewhere here there's a one called Kermit. But yeah, so so yeah, tank wise. Anything over 20 liters you can do them in. This tank is 50 liters. It's pretty good size for them. Uh, I've enjoyed keeping them in here. And you don't want anything really taller than this. This is about 35 centimeters tall. No, a bit taller than that, about 40 centimeters tall. But you don't want to go over 40 centimeters because they sort of shoot up to the air and back down like little scuba divers. So yeah, you don't want anything too tall. And as for tank setup, uh, not too big gravel they can swallow, so sand's pretty good. Uh, plants work. Uh, it's good for them to sort of climb around in. You want some stuff that sort of leads up to the top. This Amazon sword, they can climb up it. Uh, oh, there's got up for air. So lots of cover on the bottom for them to hide in. So leaf litter, so rock piles, bits of wood to hide in. Because these guys are nocturnal, so you don't see them most of the time of the day. It's quite late at night. It's about quarter past nine right now. So they're they're doing good in here because it's a bit later. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of as tank setup goes. For breeding them, you want to be lots of cover at the top. Loads and loads of cover for them to spawn in. And you want to be easily removable. So spawning mops can work, but the frogs can get stuck in them. So lots of material for them to spawn in up here. And then what I like to do once they've spawned, it's, I've never I, I've never properly committed to this and raised up the babies, but this does work to get them a decent size. So you can just remove, oh there's Kermit at the back, that's my third frog, he's a boy. So you remove that, pop it in another tank, we can hatch out the eggs. So yeah, feeding these guys, uh, I feed them some frog pellets, which I'll just grab now. Here, and a variety of frozen foods, some frozen foods defrosted here. So just give them a score of that. So mysis is a good staple for them, mysis shrimp. And I see I've got some red mosquito larvae. They look like bloodworms, but it's a lot smaller. You can feed them bloodworms, but some people say it causes a lot of bloat. I haven't found this, but do that at your own risk. So mysis shrimp is a good staple with some other stuff mixed in. Yeah, to sex them. So the males, have, you can kind of see it here. They've got like little white spots on their armpit. I'll pop a photo up of one. And the females are a lot bigger and plumper. You see, the females are big and plump. Males are a bit more defined and skinny. So yeah, breeding them, you don't really want to have fish in with in there with them. I've just got him in here just for now, because yeah. But when I start breeding them and conditioning them, I'm going to take them out. And a swift segue onto con conditioning them. Conditioning is pretty easy. Just let the water level drain a bit and evaporate. Then fill up with cold water. So not cold, cold like 20 degrees 22 degrees celsius and that'll trigger think of there's been a rainstorm and then feed them loads of lovely meaty foods so don't feed them a few days prior then when you do the water change feed them loads of food and they will go crazy and they think there's loads of food think there's a lot of water then they should spawn that's worked for me in the past and then yeah you'll hear them singing it's very faint it's sort of like a unfortunately i don't have any audio but yeah you'll know when you hear it and yeah, as for raising the babies, as I said, I didn't have much experience, but using the same water from the tank helps. And obviously heating it to about 24 degrees, 25 degrees, that's what we're gonna keep them at. And an airstone. I don't recommend a filter when they're at that young age because they can get sucked in, but really just treat them like fry. So lots of fry foods. And yeah, they don't take too long to, from what I've read, they don't take too long to get big. But yeah, it's just my experience keeping them. So yeah, don't use this just as research. Go and research across across the intertubes. Giggle it on your intertubes. And yeah. So all in all, these guys are great. If you've got a community tank with some smaller fish, they'll go great in there. 
Uh, just make sure there's cover for them and nothing too big and aggressive. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments as I'd like to answer them. I This is a bit of a not very in-depth video. If you'd like me to do a bigger in-depth one, I've got lots of footage for that, but it'll be about over 20 minutes long and uh, I think that'll be quite boring just talking about frogs for 20 minutes. But yeah. Also, if you can help with this Garami here, um, I've had him for a few months now. I've kept loads of Garamis in the past, but I've never had the iridescent sort of dwarf blues like this. You see, I think he's like short body or something because he's gasping a lot and he's a bit he's a bit more stocky and he's quite fat he's a bit more stocky than the others and he just sort of gasps and goes around i tried running loads of oxygenating air stones and stuff but it just doesn't help but he's, he's living fine like he's eating going around fine i think a trooper so yeah i don't know what's up to him but if you can help me in the comments that'd be great something else i want to mention is these frogs are not to be confused with african clawed frogs african clawed frogs get a lot bigger and they're a lot more boisterous. They will they will eat fish. And there's a few different ways you can tell. Obviously, they're a lot bigger. The African clawed frogs also have much smoother skin. These guys are like warky almost. And these guys have webbed front feet. And African clawed frogs don't have webbed front feet. They only have webbed back feet. But, yeah. Don't try putting African clawed frogs in your community tank. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to, a more in-depth video on keeping them... Uh, keeping these frogs, please tell me because keep saying if you want it because I've got a lot of footage as I said and I'd like to do it but I don't think it would do very very well on YouTube. So yeah. But all in all these frogs are a great pet. They're quite cheap, they're about four pounds fifty and you can find them at most shops. Up here in Scotland I can find them quite easily. So yeah, they're they're definitely the cheapest pet frog you can buy. They're good fun and yeah if you see them grab them. They're brilliant.